In this lesson, we will find explicit formulas for arithmetic sequences. In a previous lesson, we looked at recursive formulas, and when we did that, we looked at the recommended mileage for oil changes to begin. We noticed that the first oil change was recommended after 1,000 miles. From there, each of the next oil changes were recommended to be done after 3,000 miles. So we had 3,000 to find 4,000. We had 3,000 to this term to find 7,000. We had 3,000 to this term to find 10,000, etc. So we were able to easily generate a recursive formula for this sequence. The first term was 1,000, and each term after was found by adding 3,000 to the previous term. We want to find a way to generate an explicit formula for arithmetic sequences. Remember that the advantage for an explicit formula is that you can generate any term immediately without having to generate all the terms leading up to it. Using this formula, the recursive formula, if we wanted to find the 50th term of this sequence, we would have to find all 49 terms that come before it before we could find that 50th term. An explicit formula allows us to find the 50th term directly without having to generate any terms before it. So let's take a look at an example where we will find the, uh, an explicit formula for the sequence of above with the recommended oil change mileage. And we will use that sequence, that explicit formula, to find the 50th term in the sequence, which is denoted a sub 50. Now the first thing that we want to do when we're looking for an explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence is understand what the relationship is between each term. Since to find each term we are adding the same amount every single time, that's a constant change between terms. And we know that in any situation when we're dealing with a constant change, we can represent that situation with a linear equation. Since this is an arithmetic sequence, which we know are linear because they are constant change situations, we can think of these terms as ordered pairs, and then we can use the strategies that we learned previously to find equations, an equation for the line. So let's go ahead and represent each of these terms as an ordered pair. Now, instead of making an xy table, sequences don't deal with x's as inputs and y's as outputs, but rather we input the term number that we are on, which is denoted with the variable n. Since this sequence is called a, the outputs are a sub n, based on whatever term that we are on. So we notice here, when n, the subscript or the term number that we're on, is 1, the output a sub n is 1,000. In other words, the first term is 1,000. The second term is 4,000. The third term is 7,000. The fourth term is 10,000. Now we know that this is linear because it's a constant change. To go from the first term to the second term, we added 3,000, so the change was 3,000. We also changed 3,000 to go from 4,000 to 7,000, and we added 3,000 to go from 7,000 to 10,000. So this is a constant change situation. So we can model this with a linear equation. y equals mx plus b. Now, just so that we are consistent, instead of using an output of y, we're using an output of a sub n. So instead of using a y there, let's use an a sub n. And instead of using an x as an input, let's use n as our input. We are still looking for the slope, which is the rate of change, and the number that we'd have to add each time the y-intercept. We can use the same strategies that we've learned in previous lessons to find the slope and the y-intercept to represent this situation. 
the first thing we need is the slope. So we can find the slope using the slope formula. The slope formula requires two points. The slope formula is a rise over a run, so it's a fraction, and a rise is a change in y, and we represent change with a subtraction problem, over a change in x. To find a change in y, we're going to take a y2 minus a y1. We simply subtract the y-coordinates. And to find a change in x, we subtract the x-coordinates, so the denominator for the run is x2 minus x1. We have a lot of different ordered pairs here. So we can pick any two of them to use to find our slope here. Now I'm going to pick the first two points since those two will have the smallest numbers and generally eking, and generally working with smaller numbers is easier. Now I um, again have y's and x's in this formula. I could substitute out for a sub n's and n's, but I think that in this case we should be able to tell what we're talking about here. So the second y coordinate, the second output we're dealing with will be 4,000. The first y coordinate is 1,000. The second x coordinate is 2, and the first x coordinate is 1. So this is what we get when we substitute into the slope formula. Now, if it's easier to see where to get these substitutions, you can certainly rewrite these as an ordered pair. So once you select the two points that you'll be working with, you can write them as an ordered pair and then label them. This is an x-coordinate. This is a y-coordinate. This is an x-coordinate. This is a y-coordinate. And since this is our first point, this is x1, this is y1. And this is our second point, so this is x2, this is y2. That will allow you to see that when you substitute in for y2, you're going to plug in a 4,000. And you can do that for the other three values as well. Now we're going to simplify this. We have 4,000 minus 1,000, which is 3,000, over 2 minus 1, which is 1, and 3,000 over 1 is 3,000. So we have found the slope in this situation. It's 3,000. Now we need to find b, the y-intercept. To find b, we're going to use the same strategy that we did in a previous lesson. We're going to use the equation of our line here, a sub n equals m times n plus b. And we're going to select three of the given values to substitute in so that we will have only b as an unknown, so we can solve the equation for b. So we need to select an a sub n, we need to use our slope, and we need to use an n that's paired with that a sub n. So let's come back up to the chart here, and I'm going to select the smallest value here. I'm going to select the first point where n is 1 and a sub n is 1,000. So to substitute in, the a sub n I will be working with will be 1,000. So I'll substitute in 1,000 for a sub n. And I'll have to substitute in for my slope, which I've already found. It's 3,000. And I'll have to substitute in for n. The n that I'll be working with here is 1. And then it'll be plus b. So now b is the only unknown in this equation. So I can solve this for b by first simplifying here. 3,000 times 1 is 3,000. And then we get b by itself. We'll have the opposite of 3,000 to both expressions. The left-hand expression will leave us with negative 2,000. And in the right-hand expression, we will have uh, b. So we now know that b equals negative 2,000. So we can substitute that in up here in our missing information. So now this, right here, allows us to actually write our explicit formula, the explicit formula we were after in the first place, by simply substituting in for m and for b. So we're going to leave a sub n and n just as they are, because those are the two variables we're trying to find the relationship between. And we can substitute in for m, which is 3,000. 
keep the n there, plus b, which is negative 2,000. We've found an explicit formula for the sequence. Now we need to find the 50th term, which is a sub 50. To find the 50th term, n represents the term number. So that means that we were given that n is 50. We are looking for the term value on the 50th term. What is the output? So we can find a sub 50 by simply substituting in 50 for n. So this will give us a sub 50 equals 3000. Substitute in a 50 for n and then plus negative 2,000. Simplify the right-hand expression. We have 3,000 times 50. That should give us 150,000 plus negative 2,000 equals A sub 50. Now we just do this further simplification here. We'll find that a sub 50 equals 148,000. So the 50th term in this sequence is 148,000. We found the 50th term, and we found an explicit formula that allows us to generate that 50th term. And it's that explicit formula that allows us to do just a quick simplification to find the 50th term. If you were to use the recursive formula, like we had up above here, remember you would have to find all 49 terms before the 50th term in order to find that 50th term. Since we now have an explicit formula, we can directly plug in a 50 for n, like this, and simplify to find that 50th term. That's generally a much quicker method of generating terms in a sequence. Since in an arithmetic sequence it is a constant change between each term, we can use a linear equation. And since we have a linear equation and many given points, we can simply use the strategies that we learned previously. Now if you understand what's, what m represents in a linear equation, you do not have to do all of this work to find m. Take a look at this m value that we got. Remember that m represents the rate of change in a linear situation. Well, you can generally find the rate of change in an arithmetic sequence by simply looking at the outputs. Remember we looked at this and recognized that to go from 1,000 to 4,000, the change was 3,000. And the change was 3,000 from this term to that term, and also from that term to that, to that term. The change is always 3,000. That's our rate of change. So all of this work that we did right here, you don't necessarily have to do every time. You can simply say m is the rate of change, and if you can easily tell by looking at the data, you can simply fill that in without necessarily having to use the slope formula. Now obviously the slope formula will work every time, so if you're comfortable using that and would like to, you can still use it, or you can take the shortcut of simply finding the rate of change. Now. The y-intercept is a slightly different story. Remember that the y-intercept in real-life situations represents the beginning value or the initial condition. And algebraically speaking, it's the output value when you input 0. Since in a sequence we generally start with term number 1 and we will never input a 0, this loses its real-life meaning. You could still think of this as if you were to plug in a zero for the input, the output should be negative 2,000. So think about this. If you kind of look at this going backwards, you're subtracting 3,000. You're subtracting 3,000. You're subtracting 3,000. So if, hypothetically, we could plug in a zero for the input here, the output, when we subtract 3,000, would be to negative 2,000. But since generally when we work with sequences, we start with the term number one, this loses its real-life value, but it still retains its mathematical value of negative 2,000. That would be the value that we'd have to subtract, or rather add each time 
uh, to generate our output terms. So we can write here that the slope actually is the rate of change, which is the constant difference. A slope can be found by identifying the constant difference, which, remember, is the rate of change. To find an explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence, since arithmetic sequences are since an arithmetic sequence is linear, you can simply use the strategies for finding linear equations.